You're listening to the Real Estate Runway Podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, all right, all right, Real Estate Runway family. Today, we have a pretty bomb episode. We're going to talk with John Bowens, one of the real estate guys at Equity Trust Company. Equity Trust is one of the largest providers of self-directed IRAs and solo 401ks and anything where it's an IRA account that you are in control of. So I highly recommend you listen to this episode once, listen to it twice, listen to it thrice, because we're going to talk through some complex issues in here and some implications that people just, I think, shy away from a little bit. But this really is a great tool if you are someone who has been accruing retirement savings in some kind of an employer provided account. And you're looking for a way to invest in real estate or gold or something where you're in control and not some person who doesn't understand you and your goals. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. But before we do, if you get any value out of this episode, please give us a five-star review and thoughtful comment or subscribe to us on YouTube and do the same. We're there as well. We're also on Real Estate Runway podcast on TikTok. And this podcast obviously is everywhere podcasts are provided and on YouTube. As far as social media goes, we're always active. Love to connect with you there. Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters, or just follow any partner from the thequattroway.com on their personal account. We love providing content to you. If you want to be on the show, hit us at podcast at thequattroway.com. And if you want to apply to be on the show, please visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast. And if you want to send us a note or to give us a little topic request, say hello, podcast at thequattroway.com is how you find us there. And now without further ado, let's get on to your scheduled production. Here we go. All right, Real Estate Runway family. Today, we have Mr. John Bowens with the Equity Trust Company, probably the most well-known self-directed IRA custodian and provider in the country that I know of. John, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here with us. It's such an honor to have someone of your stature on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Chad. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Really excited about this program. You run a great podcast, just a ton of great content and education. So I'm happy to participate today. Yes. And I really appreciate you coming on and just providing some value in what is regarded to be a bit complex of a space, but we're going to break it down for the listeners. So don't you guys worry. John, before we get into the meat of the show, tell us a little bit about you. What what made you wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going to go provide self-directed IRAs to the people? Well, I I did not expect to find myself in this uh, this industry, but it's really been a blessing and it's really changed my life. And I've had the opportunity over the years to train over 60,000 investors and really help change a lot of lives. So it's been a really exciting journey. My background has been in real estate. I started in real estate about 20 years ago. I worked for a real estate company, small mom and pop company. They own commercial properties as well as residential properties. And along the way, I watched them grow and expand and create a lot of wealth for their family. And when I was in business finance school, I learned about IRAs, 401ks, and other types of retirement plans. And so I went to the family and I said, do you have IRAs, 401ks, and other retirement accounts for you and your other family members and your office? And they said, no, we don't believe in retirement accounts like that. We don't believe in IRAs and 401ks. And I said, well, why not? I mean, they're very they're tax privileged, they're very powerful from a wealth creation and wealth preservation perspective. And they said, well, we don't believe in those accounts because we don't believe in the stock market. And then when I came to Equity Trust Company 15 years ago, I found a lot of people with that same sentiment. I don't believe in IRAs and 401ks because I don't believe in the stock market. I believe in creating wealth and preserving wealth through investing in real estate. And so 15 years ago, I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way And coincidentally, I bumped into a gentleman by the name of Dick Desich, who became my mentor, and he is the founder of Equity Trust Company. And he's widely revered across the country as the pioneer of the self-directed IRA business, started our company back in 1974. And then in the early 80s, he put together one of the very first real estate transactions with IRA investors, about 22 IRA investors, in fact, in a real estate syndication. In each one of those 22 IRA investors in that real estate syndication, with only $6,000 invested in the deal, made nearly $200,000 over 19 years. It was a commercial property investment. And so that was my introduction to Equity Trust 15 years ago, and I never looked back. And so all along the way, spending thousands of dollars academically on learning about investment management, 
nowhere along the way did I ever hear you could use an IRA or 401k to invest in real estate. I learned about that 15 years ago when I came to Equity Trust Company, and I've been doing it ever since. And beyond holding residential rental properties in a self-directed IRA for tax-exempt cash flow, you could also invest in commercial real estate syndications, multifamily syndications, self-storage. We've had clients that invest in individual mortgage notes and trust deeds, as well as investments in even more unique alternative investments beyond real estate, such as private equity, hedge funds, cryptocurrency, gold and silver. So the key here, Chad, is that with a self-directed IRA, you as an individual are in the driver's seat. You're taking full control and you have the ability to invest and allocate your retirement dollars into the private market assets that you deem as a best fit for your portfolio. Some clients want to go 100% into real estate and alternatives with their IRAs, and some people want to allocate just a percentage. And the beauty of this is as a self-directed IRA custodian, we don't tell people where to invest or how to invest. What we do is educate them on how this works, and then they get to make the decisions on their own in terms of what they want to invest in. Yeah, and that's just, a, it's a crucial thing to understand, folks. And anyone who's worked with or invested with Quattro or anyone like Quattro, you know that we are huge supporters of this and probably 50 to 60% of the equity that comes into our deals is via one of these retirement vehicles. I think one of the commonly misunderstood questions, John, and maybe we can start here is, gee, I don't have any money to invest. And then you look over and you have a 401k with an employer or something like that. So how do I go about A, starting one of these things, and then B, can I take my old retirement accounts from prior employers or even existing employers or other qualified plans of sorts and move them into this to where I can now have control over my money. How does that work? Yeah, so yes to all the above, Chad. The monies that one has in an IRA, SEP IRA, simple IRA, Roth IRA, or a 401k from an old employer, or maybe folks out there don't have a 401k, but they have what's called a 403b or a 457 deferred compensation plan, or maybe they're a federal government employee, so they don't have a 401k, but they have a thrift savings plan. For all intents and purposes, those are different employer plans. But once you leave that company, you can roll over that money into a self-directed IRA. Or if you have an existing IRA, like I mentioned, SEP, simple, traditional IRA, Roth IRA, you can simply transfer a portion of that account or your entire account into a self-directed IRA. And that's really the first step of the three-step process. So the three-step process is you open and fund your account, you identify and direct your investment, and then you manage and harvest your investments and your returns. And so the first step of the process is really critical because if you don't have your account set up and funded in advance, you could potentially miss out on an opportunity. And Chad, I'm sure you've seen that in your pat in your history of working with a lot of IRA investors where they don't have their account funded fast enough and then they can't get involved in the deal or the investment opportunity that they want to participate in. So that's a really critical step. And what's really important, Chad, because this is a misnomer in the industry, is that if you roll over or transfer your money from one financial institution to another, from your current IRA provider or 401k provider to equity trust, that there's going to be some sort of taxes or penalties. That's so far from the truth. So as long as you set this up properly and you work with equity trust and we have associates that will help you through that process, you're going to be initiating a direct rollover or a transfer from one firm to another. So you're not going to create any taxes or penalties. And you're not borrowing against the account. You're not distributing money from the account to make a private market investment. So if somebody wants to invest, let's say, in a multifamily real estate syndication, or they want to buy a property directly, let's say they want to buy a single family rental property, or they want to make a private money loan, whatever it is that they're doing in the private markets, whatever type of private asset they're doing, they're investing in, as long as they follow the procedures, they're not creating any taxes or penalties. So if I bought a property, let's say with my self-directed IRA, and let's say it was a $100,000 purchase, IRA money would leave my IRA and be sent to a title company to purchase the property. There's no taxes or penalties. That's an investment. That's just like buying a stock or a mutual fund. And now I'm going to rent that house out. Let's say I'm going to rent it out for $1,200 a month. So I'm going to have $1,200 of rental income coming back into my self-directed IRA every month. And I'm going to pay no tax. And then as I have expenses that come up, I'm going to pay for those expenses with my IRA. So it's just money going in and out of the account. And then because it's a tax-exempt IRA, as long as I'm following the rules and I own that property free and clear, then I'm not going to have any Schedule E. There's no 
additional tax reporting that's necessary. When I eventually sell the property, there's no long-term capital gains tax. There's no depreciation recapture. It all is funds flowing back into my self-directed IRA or Roth IRA or solo 401k or whatever other type of tax advantage investment account that I might have with my account. So I'm glad you asked the question, Chad, because that is really important for viewers and audience listeners to know is that when they're rolling over or transferring their money from one IRA to an equity trust IRA, there's no taxes or penalties. So as long as they're following the rules and as they're investing, there also should be no taxes or penalties. And lastly, I should mention that most financial institutions are not going to allow you, encourage, or recommend alternative investments in your IRA, mainly because they cannot custody those alternative assets Secondarily, if you're working with a financial advisor or financial planner, which I certainly am not saying don't work with a financial advisor or financial planner, but you do have to understand that when you talk to your financial advisor or financial planner, they might not be able to help you diversify your retirement account into alternative investments. You do have to be cautious because some may dissuade you from investing in alternative assets. Some may even make the comment that it's not diversification. And so you have to be careful with that. You have to do your own due diligence and make a decision on where and how you want to invest and what percentage of your retirement portfolio you want to allocate to these private market investments like real estate partnerships or other types of alternative investments. I would encourage you to talk to your financial planner or advisor. We work with thousands of financial advisors and planners across the country, and we encourage them and their clients to ask questions and determine what is the most effective strategy for them in terms of deploying their retirement account capital. Yeah, that, that's fantastic context, John. And folks, if you're listening to this show, I think you're probably already aware of this. As you work your way up your, we'll call it financial endowment, as you grow your wealth, you start to get exposed to not necessarily certified financial advisors, CFAs, but more uh, RIAs. I never can remember that proper acronym. Registered anyway, Investment Advisor. Re- yep, registered Investment you. Advisor. And when I talked, so our, there are many RIAs who Quattro works with. We become a trusted alternative investment partner, if you will. And so you start to see that the more you move up the food chain, if you're working with more of a, for lack of a better term, cookie cutter financial advisor who kind of has a suite of products they're allowed to offer you, you're probably going to get discouraged from doing this. And this is, this is a tough question, John. I, I love hitting, we, we discuss tough things on this show. Why do you think that is? Why do you think I don't turn on the TV ever and see, go get a solo 401k or a self-directed IRA and take your financial future in your own hands. I see, go invest in this cookie cutter product that I have billions of marketing dollars for. What, why do you think that is in the world we live in today? Just your personal opinion. Yeah, the, the reason why is because financial advisors and financial planners, most are going to work for a, a firm, an institution that is only going to be able to promote certain types of investment products. Now, you had mentioned there, Chad, that you work with some RIAs, registered investment advisors that are more friendly to these alternative assets and have the ability in the system set up to help those individuals invest in those alternatives. And that's great. There are lots of RIAs out there that are friendly and are willing and can help you with that. And then there are other advisors that aren't going to be able to assist you with that process because the firm that they represent can only sell certain investment products. And you'll notice, Chad, that I do emphasize selling an investment product because at the end of the day, there's some advisement that's occurring, of course, and you need to respect and understand that. And I respect advisors and planners for what they do. Many of them will also tell you that there are only certain investments or portfolios that they can help customers invest in. And if somebody says, I really want to buy real estate or I want to buy land or I want to invest in this real estate syndication or multifamily deal, then they have to look elsewhere. And there's nothing wrong with that. The best thing to think about, Chad, is that your financial advisor or financial planner, they're one member of your financial team. And it's okay to have multiple team members right? You have your financial advisor that handles you with this. Maybe you have somebody in the life insurance arena that helps you with that. Maybe then you have your CPA, right? And they're handling more tax planning type elements. You're probably going to have an estate planning individual as well that's going to help you with those aspects. And you said it right, Chad, which is as you move further up the food chain, so to speak, as you move further up that chain of wealth, you're likely going to add more members of your financial team. 
So the best way to look at equity trust as a custodian, as a directed IRA custodian, is we're just another member of your financial team. We're another tool in your toolbox, so to speak, or arrow in the arrow, the quiver of arrows that you can pull out and you can utilize. And again, we call that moniker is self-directed IRA. But remember that self-directed is just an industry term. It just indicates to you that you can invest in real estate and you can take control and invest in the types of assets that you deem as a best fit for your portfolio. And to give you an example of this, Chad, of a client that is really embracing this self-direction concept. And this is more gritty in the single family rental property space, but I had a client not too long ago that had about 13,000 and some change in his Roth IRA. And I love this story because it goes to show how even with a small amount of money in an IRA, you can really make a meaningful impact and create a lot of tax-free profit. So this gentleman had about 13,000 and some change in a Roth IRA. And he had an investor partner that was willing to partner with him to help him fund a single family rental property purchase. And so this gentleman bought this property for, it was around 35 to 40,000. This was right out of Dayton, Ohio. And he put some work into it and his all in purchase and rehab cost was $75,000. Instead of renting it out long term, he ended up selling the property for about $140,000. And the investor with his Roth IRA with only 13,000 and some change, he ended up making a $34,000 tax-free profit. He grew his Roth IRA from about 13,000 and some change to over $47,000 in nine months. And that was all tax-free in his Roth IRA. And how he did that was he was the one who found the opportunity. He's the one that sort of coordinated the entire transaction. He leveraged another investor's funds for the transaction in a real estate joint, a simple real estate joint venture partnership. And when they sold the property, he took a larger percentage of the profits and made $34,000 tax free. Now, a little bit more complex transaction. Some people out there might be saying, ah, oh, that's a little bit too complex for me. That's okay. There's other opportunities as well, whether it's buying a single family rental property, making a private money loan to another investor, investing in a real estate syndication. So whether you're a very active investor or you're somebody that's more passive, there are oftentimes opportunities that you can take advantage of in these private market, if you will, arenas, investing away from the traditional stock market and investing in real estate and other alternatives. And, and I love that story, John. And, and folks, how do you eat an elephant, right? It's one bite at a time. And the first bite here is if you have funds, we'll even call them locked. If they're locked in a restricted retirement account, it can be any three letter or three numbers with a letter behind it. It's probably going to qualify, whatever the, the IRS name is. Take the step, start yourself one of these, fund it, even with a portion, and then take one step at a time. Find an easy, more passive thing to go into if that's your style, and just take it one step at a time. John, I think the next place we should really take this is people can get a little bit overwhelmed with the rules and the lineage requirements. And I say lineage because there's certain people you can invest in, including yourself. If you had to just boil it down to maybe a, a short conversation, after I do this, I'm technically in the driver's seat. What, what's my rule book? What can and can I not do with that money? Yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward, Chad. Initially, people will look at it and be a little bit overwhelmed, but I think you'll find that it's a very simple rule book to follow. And it's a very small subsection, if you will, of what we call Internal Revenue Code 4975. That's actually what it is, Internal Revenue Code 4975. Anyone out there that's interested in tax code reading and research, you can join me. I have a five-day seminar on this, I always say, Chad. I have to charge no money for it and make it free because nobody wants to attend it. But what we'll do here is just give you the Reader's Digest version. So at any rate, the Internal Revenue Code and the tax laws, and this goes back to 1974 when the Employee Retirement Income Security Act was passed. The law is exclusive rather than being inclusive. In other words, they tell us what we can't invest in with our IRA, not what we can invest in, which is a really good thing because if we were told only what we can invest in, we likely wouldn't be able to invest in all of these unique alternative non-stock market-based investments. We may only be able to invest in the stock market with our IRA, 401k, and other retirement funds. So what can't you do with your IRA? Well, first, you can't invest in collectibles. You can't invest in life insurance policies. And your IRA cannot be a member of an S corporation. So in terms of assets that are deemed impermissible, that's what we're talking about. That's pretty simple. Then we have individuals 
that are considered disqualified to us, disqualified to our IRA. They call these disqualified persons under 4975 of the tax code. And disqualified persons cannot transact with your IRA. If a disqualified person transacts with your IRA, then you create what's called a prohibited transaction. And if you create a prohibited transaction, your IRA becomes distributed. Now, the good news is these types of prohibited transactions that we're talking about, there are few and far between. So it's pretty rare for me to see someone find themselves involved in a prohibited transaction, mainly because they're educating themselves. They attend podcasts like this. They watch video training. We have webinars and all kinds of video content on our YouTube page that people can consume and learn about these rules. And so to give you a quick preview of this, disqualified persons would include yourself to your IRA, your spouse, any businesses that you own and operate, and then your children and grandchildren and your parents and grandparents. The tax code refers to these as lineal ascendants and descendants. You can't transact with these individuals. So what's a transaction? Well, buying, selling, leasing, exchanging of any property. Now, and that's from the tax code. What does that actually mean? What that means is if you own a property now personally, or you own it in an LLC or a trust, there's no way you're going to get that into your IRA. Your IRA can't buy it. You can't move it into your IRA. It'd be a prohibited transaction. That's one of the most common questions I get from new investors is, I have this property or this interest in an LLC that owns real estate. How do I get that into my IRA so I can make it tax-free? Unfortunately, there's no way that you can do that. It's off limits. Even if you tried to sell it to a third party and buy it back, that's a step transaction. It's a prohibited transaction. So I just throwing it out there because I know that's what people are already thinking. And it's important that you follow these rules again, because if you don't, then you could create a prohibited transaction and completely invalidate the IRA. The other question I get commonly, Chad, is can I take money from my IRA and loan it to myself personally? Or can I loan it to my spouse? Or can I loan it to a son or daughter that's in the real estate business? Those would be prohibited transactions as well. So you got to stay away from that. Now, could you take your IRA money and buy a new property and rent it out and have cash flow coming back in? Absolutely. That's what our customers have been doing for years and years. Could I take my IRA money and loan it to a real estate flipper to buy, fix, and flip a property, and then they pay me back interest and principal? Absolutely. As long as that person's not a disqualified person, then I can conduct the transaction. And it's interesting, Chad, I'll conclude on that segment with this. I find that investors, when they learn about these disqualified persons, what they immediately gravitate to is how do I transact with these disqualified persons? There's only in, in any one given individual's family, there's maybe, I don't know, maybe seven or eight disqualified persons. And there's how many other millions of Americans out there that you could do business with? Literally over 300 million other people you could do business with. So even if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, how do I get a property and move it into my IRA? That's okay. But again, you can't do it. You want to be thinking about new transactions going forward, new properties to buy, new private money loans to make to third parties. And there's plenty of opportunities out there where you don't have to commingle your personal funds and IRA funds. Nectar understands that raising capital is labor and time intensive, and we exist to solve that problem for you. Nectar provides fast, flexible, cash flow based financing for experienced rental owners and operators. Whether you need cash for acquiring properties, portfolios, or you simply need it for ROI generating renovations or expansion of staff, Nectar has your back. Grab your 12 month PL with debt service and click the link in the show notes below to apply today. Yeah, super important concepts. So th thanks for sharing those rules. And I think just to folks to share some color on that, if you've been following Quattro for any bit of time, you know that three out of the five managing partners of this great company are family. And we had to learn this rule very well in that one of them is my mother and the other is her sister, my aunt. We are a multi-generational real estate family. It's interesting because, and I haven't actually done this, but it is interesting that I would be able to invest in a transaction that my aunt is sponsoring but not my mother, even though we're in the same company, same line of work, everything like that. But it's just for whatever reason, they decided to design it that way, accept the rules, move on. But like you said, John, there's 300 million other people you can invest with in this country and it hasn't stopped me yet. That's correct, Chad. And I'm glad you brought that up, that people across the family tree, that's the best way to think about it. People across the family tree, you can transact with. People up and down the family tree, you can't transact with. 
And it's also important for people to understand that if they're going to buy real estate and get a loan, that loan that your IRA takes on, you as an individual can't sign a personal guarantee. The industry refers to these as non-recourse loans. And the reason why you can't sign a personal guarantee is because it's considered a prohibited transaction. So you do have to understand if you're going to go out and do real estate deals with leverage, that you have to find that specialty type of financing. And lastly, Chad, and I know this is going to sound totally opposite of what I just said a moment ago, but you could actually partner with disqualified persons. So as long as you do it appropriately. So for example, I have a husband and wife couple from Indianapolis, Indiana, John and his wife, Teresa. And John found a property that he wanted to buy for $75,000. And he ended up selling it three years later for about $210,000. He made over three years on rental income and the sale of the property. He made about $146,000, all tax-free between his Roth IRA and his wife's Roth IRA. So even though him and his wife are disqualified persons of one another, they were able to partner to buy the property. And the way they partnered on the deal is they created 18% of the property was owned by his wife's Roth, and then 82% was owned by his Roth. So it was John and Teresa's Roth IRA as a married couple, 82, 18%. All profits and all expenses flowed 82 and 18%. When they sold the property, the capital gains flowed back in 18%, 82%. No long-term capital gains tax, no recapture depreciation, no Schedule E, no reporting of that income, all flowed back into their Roth IRAs. And it doesn't have to just be two individuals. I have one client that has 10 IRAs and investment accounts for himself, his in-laws, his adult children. And on one deal alone, he partnered all 10 of his family members' investment accounts. He actually made a loan, an equity participation loan to a mobile home park operator. And so all the equity participation payments, all the interest payments flowed back into those respective 10 accounts and it was all split proportionally. So the key here for everybody is you can potentially be involved in a transaction with disqualified persons, but you have to make sure everything is done proportionally. And then if you are partnering with a non-disqualified person, you can split up the percentages any way that you want. So in contrast, I mentioned an example of the investor from Dayton who put about 13,000 and some change into the deal, and he took a larger percentage of the profits, and he was able to do that because he was partnering with a non-disqualified person. It's incredible to make that distinction. And folks, just uh, we've talked about this on the show before, but remember, anything that the government issues that has some kind of a tax identification number, an LLC, a retirement account, you as a person, i.e. social security number, the IRS and the tax code looks upon those things for simplicity purposes. They're all living, breathing things. And so if your IRA partners with someone else's IRA, the two IRAs are the living, breathing things partnering together. You yourself are not partnering with a prohibited person because you're not part of the transaction. Your IRA is and their IRA is. That's how that works, I think. So just to make the distinction, did I get that right, John, or do you want to make any correction to that? No, I like that way that you explained it, Chad, because the IRA, you're right. IRA is an entity in of itself. Now, you are the account owner of that IRA. You're in full control of making all the decisions, but it's a separate entity. And it has its own tax ID number, just like an LLC would have its own tax ID number. So that's a great distinction. And I think that's important as well, because when folks are buying real estate or making loans, the title to the property, or if you're investing, for example, in a syndication and you're filling out a subscription agreement, or you're making a private money loan and you have a promissory note and a mortgage, whatever investment you're making, it's not in your name, it's in the name of your equity trust IRA. So for example, if you look up on, on public record, you'll see equity trust company custodian, FBO is in for benefit of, the client's name or account number IRA. That, that's the exact titling that you'll see on public record. So people use their account number instead of their name for anonymity purposes or privacy purposes. I love that, John. And I think we have time for one more question. So I'm going to lob this might be a softball or it might be a curveball. Let me know. The infamous UBIT or UDFI tax, if I got that right, there's some interesting events that can cause certain phantom taxes, what I'll call it, to show up. What are those? Why do they matter? How do they come up? Let's talk about that for a minute. 
Absolutely. So unrelated business income tax, it's a special tax on tax exempt entities, including IRAs also applies to 501Cs and other tax exempt entities. IRAs would fall under that category. And this particular tax occurs really in one of two instances. The first instance is if your IRA is investing in really operating like an ongoing trader business, then you're going to incur unrelated business income tax, which would be subject to the estate and trust tax schedule, which could be as high as 37% for income over about 13,400 in 2023. So it's a very aggressive, rapidly accelerating tax schedule. Again, that's called the estate and trust tax schedule. So what do I mean by ongoing trader business? Well, think of it this way. Let's say your IRA was investing in a car wash. That's an ongoing trader business. So your IRA and the income that car wash generates is going to be subject to unrelated business income tax. If I started flipping cars with my IRA, if I started flipping lots of houses with my IRA or doing a lot of wholesale deals, I would likely incur unrelated business income tax because I'm running my IRA like a traded trade in business. Now, a lot of people ask me, wait a second, John, my IRA is invested in Apple or IBM or Microsoft or Google, Alphabet, whatever it might be, right? Why don't, do I, why don't I have UBIT tax? Well, those are publicly traded companies and they pay corporate tax. And then the income flows through is dividend income. So if your IRA is invested in a corporation paying corporate tax and income is flowing through as dividend income, then you don't necessarily have to worry about UBIT. But if your IRA is investing directly in an ongoing trader business that has passed through income, usually reported on what's called a K-1, then you're going to have UBIT. Now, the second type of UBIT, and this is more, more specifically for real estate investors, is when your IRA borrows money to acquire real estate, you incur unrelated business income tax, also referred to as unrelated debt financed income tax. Now, there might be enough depreciation and operating expenses to really wipe out a lot of that income and offset it. Therefore, you don't have UBIT tax, but at some point or another, you're probably going to have to address it. So at this point, everybody's probably in screensaver mode and they're like, what in the world does this mean? Well, let me give you a quick example. Let's say I bought a property for $100,000 with my IRA funds and I went and borrowed $50,000. So I got a $50,000 down payment going in with my IRA. I borrow $50,000, meaning my IRA borrows the $50,000. That's a loan called a non-recourse loan, meaning I can't sign a personal guarantee. And now we own a rental house, let's say, in our IRA with a debt against that IRA of $50,000. So now in that circumstance, 50% of my net profit, because 50% of the property is debt finance, 50% of my net profit will be subject to the unrelated business income tax, also known as unrelated debt financed income tax. But it's only the percentage of the property that's financed. So as I pay down that mortgage, let's say I get to 20% of the property is levered, then I only have to pay taxes on 20% of the net profit. And I did say net profit. So that's my profit after my operating expenses. And then of course, my paper losses, my depreciation. Now, for a single family rental property, usually you're going to use a 27 and a half year depreciation schedule. You're going to take advantage of depreciation and that's going to offset the taxable income. But in a multifamily real estate type syndication, if your IRA is invested in an LLC that owns real estate and let's say it's a multifamily apartment building, in that circumstance, most likely the investment sponsor, the general partner, is probably taking advantage of bonus depreciation where they did a cost segregation analysis. In that case, there could be a lot of depreciation that really completely offsets the UBIT. And you may be in a situation where you actually file the 990T tax return in order to carry forward losses over many years. And then you can take advantage of those carry forward losses to offset future gains when there's an exit or sale the property, or some sort of refinance event. So the long and short of it, Chad, and there is a lot to it, is I encourage folks to pencil out, do the math on what it might look like, even team up with their CPA if necessary. UBIT isn't necessarily bad. It's not always bad to use your IRA to invest in these types of opportunities and pay taxes. You just have to understand what that tax liability is and what your overall 
internal rate of return or what your overall return on investment is, factoring in the taxes that you would pay. And keep in mind that you may not actually have any tax in the first X amount of years. It might not be until the property sells that you actually have some UBIT tax. So don't be afraid of UBIT. I encourage folks to embrace it, understand it, do some research on it. There's lots of education out there. In fact, on our YouTube page, we have a video that talks people through specifically how UBIT works in the context of real estate investments. And lastly, I'll conclude with Chad, that a lot of people will ask me about a different type of account beyond a self-directed IRA called a self-directed solo 401k. Now, not everybody qualifies for a self-directed solo 401k. You have to have some sort of business, whether you're self-employed or you have a business, you can't have any employees, and you have to have active earned income in order to even qualify. So not everybody's going to qualify for a solo 401k. But if you do qualify and you invest in a multifamily real estate syndication with debt financing, or you go out and buy a property individually with debt financing with a solo 401k, you can actually be exempt from this UBIT because there are specific exemptions under the solo 401k or under the 401k code in general that would actually make you exempt from UBIT. So for anyone out there that wants to invest in those types of debt finance transactions and they're looking for a way to mitigate the UBIT, a solo 401k could be an attractive tool but you just have to remember that you have to qualify for that. And unfortunately, not everybody, most people, in fact, don't qualify for a solo 401k. Yeah, thank you for that detailed synopsis, John. And folks, I think John will agree with me when I say, if, if you go do the math once or twice and you start to look at, well, gee, by, I could do this personally in my cash or I could do it with my retirement funds. And so you have that level of tax shelter. And then you think about, well, if I only invested in the little bucket of things that my current provider, the same as my 401k, allows me to invest in versus the opportunity I'm going to go look at here to, for example, turn 13000 into, what, forty five in nine months, something of that sort. When you think about the net gain, even after UBIT or UDFI, you're probably still coming out ahead. So it scares a lot of people. I hear because there's a lot of articles saying, oh, but wait, don't use your 401 or your self-directed IRA because of this. It's just something to be aware of, right? Once you run the numbers once or twice, you'll probably find out you're still better off using a self-directed IRA and investing in these more legacy and wealth preservation type of assets. You're right, Chad. And I'll mention too that Equity Trust is a custodian. We don't give tax, legal, or financial advice, but what we do is prepare 990Ts for our customers. So when our customers need help preparing the 990T to take advantage of the carry forward losses or claim the income and pay the tax, we have the ability to do that. Again, that's called a 990T tax return. Hopefully, I didn't put everybody in the screensaver mode, but I will say, Chad, I really appreciate you asking the question because there's a lot of folks out there that aren't talking about these types of, I don't even want to call them issues, but talk about these types of implications and then help investors gain a path forward. And I think you said it, which is you really need to look at the overall finances and economics of it. Sometimes it's okay to pay a little bit of a price today so that we can pay any price in the future. Because going forward, maybe you find that you can get involved in other real estate investments or other opportunities that don't require debt leverage, and then you don't have to worry about the UBIT tax. I love it. And folks, as much as I would love to keep John on, he's a busy man. He's got to get back to, to his life at Equity Trust. So we're going to ask you three questions, and then we're going to let you get back to your busy schedule. So again, thank you for your time. And the first one, John, what is your superpower and how does it benefit you? My superpower is, I would say, I teach a lot on these topics and financial topics. So I have to say my superpower is call it adult education and, and specifically financial education. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Taking something as complex as anything to do with the tax code and breaking it down, that is a superpower for sure. Let's go to the flip side of the coin, John. Give me a little bit of dirt. We've heard a lot of your intelligence and experience on this call, but what's your biggest mistake, life or business, and what'd you learn from it? Oh, that's a great one. I'm happy to spend another 30 minutes talking about that. Mistakes and the trials and tribulations. Quick answer for you, Chad. I have what I'll call a high analyzer score. So I fall victim to analysis paralysis, right? I will analyze a deal till the, till the day is long and you know, by then I miss out on a really good opportunity. So I've, I've made a lot of failures in, in business and investing as a result of not having what I feel all the facts when 
if I talk to someone else, they say, John, you have all the facts, pull the trigger and move forward. It's a great one. Sometimes you have to just say, you know, th this is probably going to be good and not have everything answered. So it wouldn't be an investment if they weren't the case. So last question, and I'm going to leave this one open-ended a little bit because I know Equity Trust has a myriad of ways to get in contact with and value add content, but how best can our listeners get in touch with Equity Trust to get that white glove service that only your team provides? And what, what are some free content that you guys can direct them to help them further educate and, and really get themselves ready for this transition? Yeah, absolutely. So pretty easy. Our website is trustetc.com. Uh, looks like trustetc.com. And we have all types of education information, downloadable reports, guides, webinars. We do lots of webinars twice a week. So you can sign up for one of those as well. And then YouTube, check out our YouTube page. Just go to YouTube and search Equity Trust Company. Uh, we have lots of educational content. Like you, Chad, uh, we really are passionate about providing really good education and really dig deep into that and give viewers what they really want to hear and give them the information they need to make a decision. And so we have a lot of content and material around that. And then, of course, you can always reach out to us directly. Just go to our website and you can call our toll-free number and speak to one of our IRAT counselors. They're here to answer your questions. We don't sell investments or products. So you know that you're talking to somebody that's going to educate and inform you. And then you get to make the decision on whether it's something that's right for you or not. Yeah, folks, firsthand experience with that. Our team has done a lot of business with Equity Trust. A lot of our investors have done a lot of business with Equity Trust. And uh, go back and listen to this episode again. You're not going to absorb this in one go around. Give it two or three listens. It'll help boost the numbers for the episode anyway. See what I did there. And but in all reality, this stuff is tough. So go back through it, listen, and then reach out. John, thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate your knowledge. And we will now release you back to your very busy schedule that I know you're four minutes late for staying on here with us. So thank you for that. That's okay. Thank you, Chad. Anytime. Appreciate it. Do you manage multiple legal entities? Is your data scattered across various unsecure systems? Is your team spending too much time on manual processes? Do you struggle to meet reporting deadlines? Simplify entity management and compliance with Entity Keeper. Entity Keeper helps easily manage entities, build and maintain complex organizational charts, and track filing deadlines, all in one secure, cloud-based platform. And with automated alerts and centralized document storage, you'll stay two steps ahead of compliance deadlines. Click the link in the show notes to learn more and book a demo. All right, folks, I hope you really enjoyed that episode with Mr. John Bowens. I mean, just the ability to take complex things and talk about them in layman's terms that you and I can understand. If I'm able to have a conversation with him, then he must be doing a good job dumbing things down. Just incredible information about some of the common questions and concerns about using a self-directed IRA, what is possible using a self-directed IRA. And if those stories about the guy in Dayton, Ohio, who turned 13,000 into 45 in nine months, or the guy who invested partnering with his spouse's self-directed IRA and turned $140,000 profit. You can't get that stuff in mainstream investments, not very easily. So anyway, reach out to equity trust companies, listen to this episode again. It's probably going to give you different nuggets every time you listen to it. And we hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. Folks, if you got any value out of the show, Please leave us that five-star review and thoughtful comment. It really helps us grow the show and reach more people just like you. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to us there. Leave us a comment as well. We're really trying to grow in that space and provide more video education to more people out there. And we're also on TikTok. We are getting with the times. If you want to get us on TikTok, Real Estate Runway Podcast on TikTok. Folks, this has been a pleasure serving you today. Until next time, this has been an episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.